Shalom, and welcome to Darche Choshech, Pathways of Darkness, a linguistic analysis of the wrong ways of Proverbs. Today we will talk about the third fool. The word for the third fool in Hebrew is Naval, Deuteronomy 32.6. Do ye thus requite Yahweh, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Job 2.10 But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we find good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job is talking to his wife, who has said to him, Curse God and die. Psalm 14, 1, and many other places. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, The fool, the naval, hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt, they have done abominable works, there is none that doeth good. The hallmark of this kind of fool is that he has ceased to believe in God. Isaiah 32, 6 For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against Yahweh, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Naval comes from a verb root, which means to fade away or to wear away. Psalm 1, 3 And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Isaiah 28, 1 Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. So we begin to see that the essential part of life is flowing away, is withering away from the fool. There is a related word, neville, which means a musical instrument, which is called a psaltery. A psaltery is something like a harp. Psalm 92.3 Upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. Second Samuel 6.5 And David and all the house of Israel played before Yahweh on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries, and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. The idea is if you pluck a string of a harp, we can see how the sound kind of fades away. It lingers and then it fades away. So it's this fading. The essential life of the noise of the sound is withering away. This root also means um, a bottle or a container. Essentially, it would be like a, a wine skin or an empty place where the uh, fluid inside might be flowing out. 1 Samuel 1, 24. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of Yahweh in Shiloh. And the child was young, speaking of uh, Hannah and Samuel. Lamentations 4.2, the precious sons of Sion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of a potter? A related word, nivelah, is translated as foolishness or a disgusting act, and we will see the nature of those acts in both of these uh, scriptures. Genesis 34.7, and the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done, talking about the rape of Dinah. Judges 26 And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces, and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel, for they had committed lewdness and folly in Israel.
the vela, this word is frequently used in reference to uh, really pornographic use of women or men. Another related word is nivala, which means corpse. Leviticus 5.2 Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of unclean cattle, or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Once the essential life has flowed out of the body, it becomes a corpse, a carcass. Leviticus 7.24 And the fat of the beast, that which dieth of itself, and the fat of that which is torn with beasts, may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. A parent root is a two-letter phoneme, which expresses an idea but might not be a word by itself. The parent root for naval is betlamid, which is used as a negative particle. We've talked about that in other places. The Paleo-Hebrew pictographs for Bet and Lamed represent a house and a shepherd's staff. It can have some good meanings uh, where the staff brings you back to the house. For example, in Yovel, Yaval, which is our, uh, the root that means jubilee, when you come home to the house, it's a joyous thing. But if you are being led away from the house, uh, then it is not a good thing. And this is what we see in this case, the Naval is walking away from the house, away from the ways of God, away from the place where God dwells. One related word is bli, which means without. Job 8.11 Can the rush grow up without mire? Can the flag grow without water? This flag is uh, not a degel flag, but it's a kind of... Uh, I think it's kind of iris. It's a kind of plant. Job 4.11 The old lion perisheth for lack of prey, and the stout lion's whelps are scattered abroad. They are without. And this is a modern Hebrew word, bli, without. Another cognate belonging to this parent root is bala, bet lamet hay, and it means to become old. When the essential life is flowing away from the person, the person is getting old. Genesis 18.12 Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Psalm 32.3 When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long man talking about his sin, when he is silent about his sin. Another cognate from this parent root is balal, bet lamed lamed, which means to mix or mingle. Genesis 11:7. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. From the story at the Tower of Babel, when you look at this word the way it's conjugated, in the Hebrew, it looks exactly the same as corpse or folly. Navla, it has the nun prefix for we will do something and the injunctive, hey, we will certainly do something. Once the language is mixed and mingled, the flow of communication is coming to an end. Hosea 7.8, Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. In other words, he's just half-baked. He's cooked on one side. He understands some things, but the other side he has rejected. What is the remedy for this third fool? Proverbs 30, 32. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. In other words, stop talking this way. You need to... Go back and repent, as we saw in uh, Psalm 32. He said, when, when I was silent, my bones began to, the essence of life began to flow out of my bones. 
And now it says in Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Yahweh, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. Every person needs to repent for the foolish things that they have done. But once you are at this point, your only option is repentance. If you are thinking that the name, the word Naval sounds familiar, it is. It's the name of Nabal. This man who stood against uh, David when David's men were in the field, basically protecting their she his shepherds. First uh, Samuel 25.3, now the name of the man was Naval, and the name of his wife is Abigail. And she was a beautiful woman of good understanding and a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish. He was cache. He was stiff-necked and evil. He was raw in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. So in this situation, David uh, has been protecting this field, this area for Naval. And then he comes and asks to join him for uh, a little profit, a little... Um, exchange that he might eat with him at, at his feast day. And Naval turns him down. And so this is a very foolish thing for Naval to do. And then we know that Abigail goes, she intercedes on her husband's behalf. She doesn't say anything to him about it. She just heads David off at the pass and says, uh, look, this, uh, this might not be the best course of action for you. And, and we do know that vengeance belongs to Yahweh. And so David repents of thinking that he's going to come and murder Naval and the people with him. And uh, Abigail comes back to the house. Her husband's drunk, so she waits until he's sober. And she says, look, this is what I have done uh, on your behalf. In 1 Samuel 25, 37 and 38, But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Naval and his wife had told him of these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that Yahweh smote Naval, that he died. I think the ten days gives you a very specific clue to the situation. His heart became as stone, and he was already kashes. He was stiff-necked, he was stubborn. Now he is as hard as a rock. He cannot repent. The ten days are in reference to the ten days between Yom Truah, the Day of Trumpets, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Particularly in Jewish cultural practice, these are the ten days of awe. These are the days for repentance. Now, I'm not saying that this event occurred at that time of year. I don't know, but I think these are the days, the focus on the ten days, is that this man had time to repent. And if he had repented, he could have been saved. But his heart was hardened. He was a heart of stone. And he would not repent in that time. And therefore, Yahweh smote him and he died. Just as a brief review, we have started out uh, with the simpleton, the man who is open to anything that comes along, we see that he begins to walk off the path, the path of Torah. And I do recommend that you go back and review the Psalm 119 vocabulary. We'll give you a link for that. Because all the words for judgments and Torah and statutes, all those words have to do with walking in a direction. So this simpleton, he begins to stray. He begins to become attached to other ideas. He begins to uh, become stubborn and put his faith in wrong things. And now he is the Naval. Now the life is flowing out of him. And lest he repent, he will die in his sin. Next time, we'll go on to some meanings for the words for sin. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.